and a spiritual teacher said to me that, that I had learned the difference between uh, uh, <coughs> being Hashem, guilt, which has a bottomless, abysmal feeling, and harata, which is regret. And he said to me, the feelings of guilt are doing you no good. It's bottomless. You can't name it. You can't repair it. He says, but you can look back on specific things and feel remorse. And if you feel harata, remorse for something specific, where it came from, how you did it, why you did it, and what the, what the tikkun would be, what the remedy would be. So learning that term, understanding from this perspective, guilt actually leads to spiritual paralysis. <coughs> Regret, remorse, the Hebrew word is harata, actually leads to spiritual growth. So in this work, <coughs> if you're a conscious moral person, you will feel guilt. Translate it to remorse, to regret, name it, and figure out the steps. So some of those steps are the ability to actually feel ashamed of yourself. Now remember, this is very different from that existential shame that paralyzes a person. In fact, people who, have, who suffer what I call the shame wound actually can't feel moral shame. They're the people who have the hardest time apologizing <coughs> because their sense of self is so fragile that if they apologize, they would actually come apart. So if you know people that are very touchy, tend to blame other people but never take responsibility, I guarantee you there's profound suffering going on in there. <coughs> That's very hard oftentimes for those people to get through the day because their sense of self is so fragile. <coughs> people who can readily ta uh, take responsibility, easily apologize, <coughs> and feel ashamed of themselves don't suffer from the shame wound. That's an odd kind of irony. If you suffer from a shame wound, you're defended from feeling ashamed of yourself. If you don't deeply suffer from the shame wound, it's not that difficult to say, you know, I'm ashamed of myself. I should never have done that. Let's I want to make this better. Right. So one thing, again, you want to move from that existential shame, right, which is self-attacking and destructive, to what you might call a more rational, just moral shame. I've done something. I'm ashamed of it. I need to work this through. I need your forgiveness. I need to, uh, to reconcile. Um, so once you uh, are able to, feel, to um, name, feel remorse, and some kind of emotional attachment. Now, why is the emotional attachment important in doing teshuva? You've all met the person who apologizes, but there's no emotion behind it. In fact, it's almost a rebuke to you. They say, okay, fine, I'm sorry. Right? It's like, well, what did I do? Right? Because it comes off defensively. And so oftentimes people say, um, so the, uh, the emotional participation is important, and that's where people find apologies insincere. And what I say to people is, oftentimes, for a person with a shame wound, that's the very best they can do. So when people say, that apology was not sincere, what they're actually doing is touching the wound, activating the wound, and not making anything better. From my talk this morning, we don't know what other people are struggling with. We don't know their wounds. We don't know their demons. And if someone offers an apology, even if it sounds insincere, for them, that might be heroic, transformative work just to get that far. So in this work of teshuva and forgiveness, it's important that the, we, we be wise with each other, we be careful with each other, and help each other along, and not make it worse for each other.